All right, so here's our lesson 7.1, solving polynomials. So uh, a few things to remember. First, solving means to find solutions, which is the same as your roots, zeros, and x-intercepts. So anytime you see the question just says solve and it gives you an equation, that's what you're looking for. Um, you must set your equation equal to zero first, and you want to make sure you remember the zero product property as well. And we'll talk about that. And then the, this is the big one. The total number of solutions equals the degree. And remember, the degree is the highest exponent. So in this first example, I'm looking for four total answers. So in the end, I should be able to list four separate answers. So let's go ahead and start. Um, on this first example, I've got three examples for you today. On this first one, um, I notice there are four terms. I also noticed that I want to try factoring first, if at all possible, because factoring is going to be the easiest thing to do. So in this one, um, I noticed that I can take a GCF out, and my GCF is going to be X. So when I take that out, that leaves me with this factored form, X, and I have X to the third, plus 3X squared, minus 4X, uh, minus 12, and I'm going to go ahead and set that equal to zero. So I've got one... Um, thing done. Now I notice that this next part is going to be grouping. So I'm going to have to go and do that with that next part. So I've got grouping and I'm actually going to, I guess I'll hold on to that GCF there for a minute so I don't get confused. So in this grouping step, you all know how that works. Take your GCF out of the first one, that's x squared, and then kind of undistribute. So I'm thinking to myself, x squared times what gives me x to the third? That's x. x squared times what gives me 3x squared? That's 3. Remember, your second one should kind of match, so I'm going to take out a negative 4, and if I undistribute there, that gives me x plus 3 as well. And so this part, if I factor, is going to give me x plus 3 times uh, x squared minus 4. And I'm going to bring down the 0, or not the 0, but this x from the GCF in the very beginning. Now, if it's possible, we want to keep going because we want to be able to find all the specific roots. So I notice that x squared minus 4 uh, is difference of squares, and I can break that apart. And so this is going to become x plus 2 and x minus 2. So this is kind of where all your factoring rules come together. So I'm going to copy down the rest of what I've got, x plus 3, and then I have the x from the GCF. So now that I have that factored completely, it's really quick for me to see the four answers. Remember, I need to have four, so this is going to be x equals, the first one gives me zero, the second one gives me negative three, I have negative two, and I have positive two. So those are my four answers to this polynomial. All right, let's look at another type of example you might see. Okay, again, um, I'm going to try to consider factoring first because um, if you're going to see anything on non-calculator, it's going to be factoring, so you need to be prepared for how to do that. Um, I notice, now I've never really seen x to the fourth minus a number, but this looks a lot like difference of squares to me. So I'm going to kind of treat it like it is difference of squares. When you break apart x to the fourth, though, you're going to get x squared at the front of each instead of just x. Um, and then negative 16 breaks apart to be plus 4 and minus 4. So it looks a lot like difference of squares does. And now, just like the last one, I want to consider, can I keep going with either of those? So right, x squared plus 4, that's going to be a dead end. You can't, like, break that down because it's not difference of squares. Uh, x squared minus 4 is difference of squares again. So I can break it apart, which is going to give me... Um, another step, that's x squared plus 4. This x squared minus 4 breaks apart to be x plus 2 and x minus 2. So I've factored as far as I can, and that's going to give me two of my solutions um, that I can solve really easily. Last week, we would just say, oh, this part right here, you're just going to take the square root. Well, this time, we actually want to find all the solutions, so we're actually going to do that. So I'm going to solve this part for a second. x squared plus 4 equals zero. Since this is just x squared, this is a perfect problem to do square roots with. This would be terrible to do quadratic formula because you've got, like, it's just going to be way too much work. So I'm going to isolate x squared, right, get rid of any visitors. So that's going to be x squared equals negative four. I'm going to take the square root. Remember that that should give you two answers. Remember it's x squared, so there's got to be two answers hiding in there. That's going to give me x equals 
the negative part gives me an i, and the square root of 4 is 2. So that's x equals 2i, and x also equals negative 2i. Okay, now you can go back to your other factors that are a little bit easier. This one's going to be negative 2, and this last one's going to be positive 2. And so if you go back and look, this started out as x to the 4th, which meant I wanted 4 answers, and you should notice here that you have 4 answers. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, make sure you know how to get all of those. One more example. Okay, as with the other ones, I'm going to start with any factoring patterns I know first. So the first thing um, that I always look for with factoring is going to be a GCF. And I notice that I can take an X out of all of these. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. GCF is going to be X. So it's going to give me X times X to the third minus 13X squared plus 55. Whoa. X minus 91 equals 0. Now, I notice that this next part kind of looks like grouping. There's four terms right there. Um, and you may not see this as readily, but I know if I try to take out grouping, these are not going to match. All right, and if you don't believe me, that's what you would get. Notice how these two um, parts don't match, so you can't actually do grouping. And unfortunately, not only does grouping not work, but I don't even see anything else I could try. That has four terms, so you can't do quadratic. Um, you're really not going to be able to do anything else uh, other than dot, dot, dot. Um, your option now is going to be to use your calculator. So what I want to do is show you how to use your calculator and synthetic division to help you find the rest of the answers to this problem. All right, so if you're doing something on your calculator and I'm doing this video, what's going to help you the most is if you have your calculator and you're pushing the same buttons I am and working right along with me. All right, so what I'm going to do is use my calculator to help me figure out how to keep going with this part that says x to the third minus 13x squared plus 55x minus 91, right? That's the part that I'm stuck on. So I'm going to go ahead and obviously turn my calculator on. And I want to go and be able to type that equation in somewhere. So I'm going to go to y equals, all right, that's my y equals button right here. You should have a menu that pops up like this. Um, if you have entries in any of those parts, you just need to clear them out so that everything is blank. All right, now that you're looking at that blank screen, in this first y1, we're going to go ahead and type in this equation, x to the third minus 13x squared plus 55x minus 91. You're not going to type the equals zero, all right? It's up to us to kind of figure out how to interpret that, and we'll see that in a minute. Make sure that you use this little caret button to make any exponents and that you arrow over so that you're back to normal size like digits when you go to type in the next part, all right? So when I did that, this is what mine looked like um, afterwards. So like this is me at the end of typing all that in. It didn't fit all on the same line for mine. Some of yours may bump down um, and like you, it's kind of split and that's okay. It's still all under Y1. So now that I have my equation typed in, I'm going to go look for a table of values because I want to see if my table will tell me where any zeros are. Before we do that, we need to fix your table settings. So first of all, table settings is right here above window and it's in blue. So we're going to hit second, table set. You should have a window that kind of pops up looking like this, and it's just asking you two things. I'm really only showing you this in case it is in a weird spot. So you want to make sure your table starts at zero. That's what it's asking. Where do you want your table to start? Zero. What do you want it to count by? Ones, right? You don't want it counting by some crazy decimal, all right? So just make sure those things are set. Now to view your table, the actual table button is above graph. If you hit graph, that's just going to graph that for you. That's not what you want. You want to actually see it in a table, so you're going to hit second and then this button, and that'll make a table pop up. Now, I've actually done some scrolling for us here, but remember, our job is to find zeros, which means where the function equals zero. So I see right here that when x is 7, the function equals zero. If you did synthetic division, remember, that would mean your remainder is zero, and so that's a factor. So I know that x equals 7 is a solution. So let's go back to that problem and see how we use that to finish the problem out. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and um, solve that out using synthetic division. And uh, I'm going to actually pause the video and go ahead and do the numbers for you so you don't just have to watch me do that. All right, so I got zero in the end, which means that what I did was correct. So at this point, I want to show you kind of what all it is we have left. We've got x from my GCF. We have x minus 7 from our synthetic division. Remember, the factor is opposite from the root. And now I've got x squared minus 6x plus 13 for my remaining, rem, remaining, remaining part. All right. So the last thing we need to do is see if we can finish breaking down this uh, x squared minus 6 plus 13. And we can try factoring 13 and negative 6, but there's not going to be anything we can come up with, which you guessed it, means we're going to have to do quadratic formula. So again, I'm going to pause the video and go ahead and start quadratic formula on this problem for us. All right, so I got down to negative 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 16 over 2 which is negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 16 is 4, and the negative part is an i, all over 2. And that simplifies one more step to give me negative 3 plus or minus 2i, because both of those are divisible by 2. So now if we go all the way back kind of to the beginning of our problem, we're supposed to be getting four answers or four solutions in the end. So if we talk about doing that, my answer should be, the first one is going to be 0 from that GCF that we took out of the x. My next one is going to be 7 that I got from the calculator. And then I have two imaginary solutions here. I'm going to break them apart just so that I show that I'm listing all four of them. I have negative 3 plus 2i and negative 3 minus 2i. And those are all of my solutions for this problem.